of this chapter, what we're going to do is we're going to apply this to error analysis. And uh, okay, let's explain what that means. So what do we got here? For a differentiable function of a single variable, we define the differential. Um, so all this is really is a, a change in x. Um, now, what this is going to be in our application is um, an uncertainty in x. So the idea is, say, if you measure something and you think it's 1.83 meters, then actually it might be like more like 1.8334, whatever. And that difference, so it, it say change in x, I think maybe difference, there's other words I could use, error is really what it's going to be, error, difference. Um, we consider this like a variable um, and what we, what we have is differentiable functions that basically just means things you can differentiate are locally approximately linear so they have tangents so they look like lines um, basically is the idea uh, if you zoom in close enough okay so let's see what the hell I'm banging on about here so let's get some kind of a function going something like this so um, what is the point that we're going to look at? It's always hard to pick the point here. So we'll go with this one. So I think this will be the point x0. Okay, something like this, yeah. And this is the point x0 plus delta x. Now, what you're supposed to think about this at the moment is x0 is um, like a measurement that you make. And the, the red thing is some formula that you're using. But the truth of the matter is when you make a measurement, there's always an error. So what you have over here is this is actually the, uh, the true value, or the exact value. But this is your measurement, or you can nearly think of it as an approximation, which isn't too bad. And the question is, how does the error in the measurement affect the error in the calculation. In other words, how, if the X can be out by so much, how much can the Y be out by, okay? And we use what's called the differential to do this. So the differential works as follows. So we bang in our measurement into the formula. This is the, the Y coordinate here is basically our calculation. So if we talk about X zero, F of X zero, the X zero we've already said is the measurement. This is a calculation. So for example, maybe X is side length and um, Y or F of X would be the area. So you measure the side length to be whatever 1.8. You calculate the area to be 1.8 squared. But how would an error in your measurement affect that calculation is what we're looking at. So one way you could track it is you could use what's called the differential. So Look, you're, if, you're, if you're drawing this in front of you, you can do it. I'm a disaster at this. I need to draw a tangent at this point. Oh, pretty, pretty good, but it should really go through the point, but I'll take it. So what we're going to use is we're going to use a little triangle here. Actually, the way it turned out is actually not bad. So if I go up from x0 plus h to here, so this has coordinates... Um, now I'm just going to call it x1, it's just a little bit easier, and uh, say f of x1. So x1 is the true value of, say, the side length, and this is the true value of the thing that you're trying to calculate, true value of y. Now, the difference between these two, which two, your calculation and the true value, is the error in your calculation. So this difference here is the error in your calculation. And what we are going to do is we're going to approximate that error using the tangent of any colors left mighty light blue so see this length i'm going to use that to approximate it 
and this is called dy and that's the differential okay so so what have we got here dy which is something that is going to be easy for us to uh, calculate approximates the error in the calculation okay so um yeah it's 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 actually very easy to calculate this thing because um we can do a little bit of trigonometry in the little triangle this one this here 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 um so you can say that the slope of the line is the rise over the run now what's the slope well the slope is um it's a tangent so it's the derivative evaluated at x is equal to the rise over the run so the rise here is dy and the run is delta x so therefore we get that dy is the derivative at x times the change in x now this if you think about derivatives this really does make sense because the derivative is the rate of change of y with respect to x times the change in x so it like the derivative set if the derivative is 3 if you change x by 1 y changes by 3 if the derivative is 3 and you change y by um, 4 then y changes by 3 by 4 a similar a, a much easier kind of a thing um, is so say let's write down some distances so suppose you've got the velocity which is uh, let's say 60 miles per hour and that is equal to the rate of change of distance which I'm going to use s with respect to time now if you multiply the rate of change of distance with respect to time times a change in time that's going to be a change in distance for example the SDT is 60 if you're going 60 miles an hour and you drive for 1.5 hours you're going to go 90 miles and that's the change in distance so this is um now you might say oh why have i got delta s there and dy well that's if the velocity is, is a constant so if the velocity is a constant that's the same as saying that the slope of the curve is a constant which is to say that the purple tangent will match the curve exactly but it won't of course so uh if you're a bit more a bit more careful than that but that was more just showing the thing on the left okay so if you want to estimate the error in a calculation you multiply the derivative of the, the thing you're calculating times the error and that will give you an estimate now if you look at it there it's giving an underestimate but in general the error is supposed to be small which forces you know it should be kind of more um kind of around here and if you look there the purple tangent and the red line they kind of pretty much agree very much so and that's what you're expecting a small error okay so how does this generalize well it generalizes uh, basically like this so for a differentiable function of two variables we define differentials delta x delta y similar story and if we look at how um like what's the error in our calculation of z due to error in the measurement of x and y we say that you, sh you should add them together okay right so uh, some of this is a bit difficult i appreciate that but we'll keep going so suppose you have a physical variable i just mean something that you're interested in like it could be well or not interested in uh, the area of a rectangle for example depends on two variables a and b so you measure a and you measure b you record values a0 b0 and you do know the maximum errors like so the errors can come from different things if you're using a voltometer or some kind of digital display the error might be quoted as five percent of the reading so you know the error if you use a meter stick you know that the error is probably a centimeter if you use more kind of accurate things you, you know you know the error it's it's um, most of the time and sometimes if you, if you don't know the error you're just going to have to be a bit conservative so you can keep track of the errors in the calculation of p by knowing how much p will change due to small changes in a and b now the problem is with an error you don't know if it's really going to be positive or negative so like say if you have a voltometer um, and i'm going to say 12 10 volts and say the error is five percent 
So the true value could be like 10.5 or it could be 9.5. And you don't know if the error is positive or negative. And the other thing is if you've got two variables, you're not guaranteed that all the errors are going to, you know, all going to be positive or all going to be negative. And you need to take a worst case scenario. So this is what um, is going to be written down the bottom of the page, if I can get some. Um, yeah. So what we're going to say is that the error in the calculation of P, for all the various different reasons, we're going to approximate it by the maximum, what we're going to call DP max. So what that is, is it's basically going to be this formula here, this differential. But we're going to take the worst case scenario. You see, the problem is we don't know the signs of delta x and delta y. So what we're going to do is just make everything positive, And that'll be like a worst case scenario. Okay, so this is equal to um, basically errors due to errors in the calculation of p due to errors in the measurement of a. So that'll be the rate of change of p with respect to a, but we're going to keep uh, b constant times the error in a plus. Now, the, the only thing I'll say, right, you have an open book exam. This is one thing that uh, for day students, I always, I, I never give them this formula in the exam because I want them to understand that rate of change times, like rate of change of y with respect to x times change in x is a change in y. But if we're going to talk pragmatically for a second, you have open book exams, this formula is here. Here you go. It's right here. Okay. Now we want, we want some, um, uh, how we say, conventions. So how are we going to do things? So you're going to have a quantity with given measurements, with given errors, and your job will be to present your calculation in the form, the calculation plus or minus the error. And we're going to use these three rules. So the first of all, this approximation here is quite rough. So when you calculate this thing on top, it's not very accurate. So we're just going to use the first significant figure. Like you can actually see that it's not accurate in this picture. But it should be accurate to like, like say, you know, once like say say that the true error is one and we get 0 0.7. Well, the 0 0.7 would round to one. So you know, you're you're you're, you're talk, it's reasonably reasonable to talk like that. Now everything after the significant figure and the error. So there's not like say for example, I'll show you what doesn't make any sense. So you said the area, for example, of a a rectangle or whatever, say it's you say you wrote 15.3978 plus or minus 0 0.2. Now there's no point writing that. Now we look at the last thing, we're going to do units. So we may as well start doing that. There's no point including these because they're within the margin of error. Like how can you be that precise? So let me kind of give an example of what this is like. So suppose you have a level of uncertainty about the amount of money in your bank and say that amount of uncertainty is 100 euros. You should, and then you say, how much money do you think you have? You should really only match it to the nearest 100. Like there's no point saying, um, like you could get away with say, oh, oh, I have 950 euros plus or minus 100. That's not too bad. It's not too bad. But what you wouldn't do is, oh, I think it's 952 euros and 87 cents. You wouldn't say that. That doesn't make sense. Now, you could say 950 euros plus or minus 100, and I would struggle to argue with you. But what I'm recommending um, is that 100 is to the nearest 100, and you should match the precision. So actually, you'd say 1,000 plus or minus 100. Like, and you can actually push that a bit further. If you really think it's near 950, like, are you really saying it's between 1,050 and 850 but you're that sure that it's close to 950 that doesn't make sense so you can only really be as, as precise as the uncertainty so you wouldn't write what i just wrote there you would match the precision so the precision is the number of decimal places now this is one significant figure you should do this to the same precision 15.4 plus or minus 0 0.2 meter squared that's how you do it that makes way more sense and then your engineers you should include units okay we'll do some examples and the base and height of a right circular cone are measured to be 10 centimeters and 25 centimeters respectively 
with a possible error in measurement of as much as 0.1 centimeter in each. Use differentials to estimate the, the maximum error. Now, what I would say here is that it's all centimeters and we, we can keep centimeters. You can convert to all meters, but you, you should be consistent. Uh, the other thing is I will be giving you the formula whenever you need it. Uh, so the volume here of a cone is one third pi r squared h. Okay, so off we go. So the first thing we do is we make our calculation. So our calculation is what we'd call v0. We put in the values that we, look, what we think the radius is. We think the radius is 10. We think the height is 25. Bang those into the formula, one third um, pi r squared h. Now, we might have to round this um, a little bit because uh, we're going to be rounding this later on. And even if I put in four significant figures, I might actually need five. So maybe just I'll just put in five for now. And look, if I need more, I can I can go back in here. So one third pi by 100 by 25 to five significant figures, 2618.0. And I may as well put in the units here, it's volume. And look at the units, r squared h, so that's meter, centimeter, 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 centimeter cubed. Okay, right, now let's estimate the error in that calculation due to the errors in our measurement. So we write that the error in the calculation of the volume is approximated by this differential dv max, which is equal to differentiate the volume with respect to the first variable, which is radius, times the error in the radius, plus differentiate the volume with respect to the height, times the error in the height. Now, one thing that we should do, one, one question is, when we have these derivatives, where do we evaluate them? And that, But that's actually answered back here, because the derivative, and it's not done here, we must fix it, the derivative, which is the slope of the tangent, is calculated at x0. So the derivative is calculated at the measurement. So both of those derivatives are to be evaluated at the measurement. Now I think we've loads of space here. So we're going to differentiate this 1 third pi r squared h. Now everything here actually is positive. So, oh yeah, what do those bars mean? Um, the bars mean... If you have a positive thing, it gives you the same thing. And if you give it a negative thing, it gives you, uh, it changes the sign. So here everything is positive, so I don't really need them. So differentiate this thing with respect to r. Now that means r is changing, h is constant. So I'm going to differentiate 1 third pi r squared h with respect to r. First fixing the constants, 1 third pi times h. So that's fixing the constants, and now differentiate r squared with respect to r is 2r. And that will be times the error in r. Plus, differentiate the volume with respect to height. So this time, fixing all the constants, 1 third pi r squared. And what's the derivative of h with respect to h? 1 times the error in h. So now we evaluate um, 1 third pi, the height is 25 twice the radius is 10 now both of the errors are 0 0.1 plus one third pi radius is what is the radius 10 squared times one which doesn't do anything and then the error in the height is 0 0.1 so i'm going to put this to four significant figures and then this thing we round to one significant figure so one third by pi, um, by 25, by 20, by 0 0.1, plus one third, by pi, by 100, by 0 0.1. And I get uh, 62.83. And I should round this to one significant figure. Now the, the first figure is six. And well, if it was 66, we'd go seven. And everything after that is zero, so 60. Okay, and now we match the precision, so we round this thing up. Now the thing down the bottom is to the nearest 10, so we round this to the nearest 10, 2620. And now I have our, our answer. The volume is equal to 2620 plus or minus 60 
centimeters cubed. Um, this is actually something like this module is kind of it's it's tough module in many ways for you because there's not many applications in it. It's it it's unfortunately it's kind of module with a lot of box ticking. It's just kind of picking up some different technique techniques that you might need in level seven. But as as they stand, they're not very useful. But this is actually something you can do if you're doing any calculation. Um, now you could you could come to me and you could say. I have a better way. I could put in all the biggest values and all the smallest values. So I could put in 9.9, 24.9, and I could put in 10.1 and 25.1, and I could find out what's the biggest difference between that and 2618 centimeters cubed. And I say, I do accept what you're saying, but the problem is, if the formula is a bit more complicated, you don't know what combination of variables to make it, um, to make the errors as big as possible. So that's why, we don't do it like that. And, and as it happens, if you do it like that in this assessment situation, you'll get no marks. Uh, your assessment will say use differentials. And this is differentials. Okay, so we'll do uh, another example here. Let's see how many examples I have in total. I have three. Yeah, we'll keep going. So here's another one. In experiment, uh, this is where I would learn this stuff, doing physics experiments. In an experiment to measure the acceleration due to gravity, a physicist dropped an object in a vacuum tube of length L and measured the time taken for the object to reach the bottom. To calculate G, the physicist used this formula. If the length of the vacuum tube is measured to be 10 meters with an error of... Now here, look, the error is, it's more natural to say kind of 10 centimeters, but you have to keep the units together. And usually I'll convert the units for you, which I shouldn't, but I do. And the time measured to be 1.43 seconds with an error of 0.01. Use differentials to estimate the range of values of G. Now, one thing that we should say here, if you want to differentiate this G, um, like the natural thing when you look at it is it needs a quotient rule, but the variables are L and T. And if you're just differentiating with respect to L or differentiating with respect to T, you haven't got a function of L divided by a function of L or a function of T divided by a function of T. So you can use the quotient rule, and maybe we'll just do an example over on the side, but you don't have to. It's actually easier to write this as 2L and then divided by T twice is T to the minus 2. It's going to be easier to differentiate it like that. Let's see what happens if you use the quotient rule. Now, it's, it's not wrong. It's just kind of overkill. So we're going to differentiate um, G, say, let's say, respect to T. So that says it should be the bottom, which is T squared times the derivative of the top. Now, the, if we're differentiating with respect to t, l is a constant, and so 2l is a constant, and so the derivative of the top is 0. Minus the top by the derivative of the bottom, which is 2t, all divided by the bottom squared, which is t squared squared, so that's t by t by t by t, t to the 4. Well, we'll just write t squared. But you're always going to have this multiplication by 0. And so you get this minus 4lt over t to the 4, which you can simplify um, if you want. Uh, I think it's overkill. It's not wrong, but I think it's overkill. Right. So let's do our best guess here. Oh, how are we for space? Okay. So um, what we call g0, our best guess of g, is 2 times l. l is 10 times 1.43 to the power of minus 2. We have to be a little bit care careful with the calculator. And we'll go with five significant figures. So that's 20 by 1.43 to the power of minus 2. So I get 9.7804. If we look at units, um, every, now you, you could just say, oh, it's acceleration. But if you look at the formula, you can get the units from that because it's meters divided by second squared. Okay, so that's grand. Now we're going to use this formula. So the error in that calculation, because we're not sure about the value of the length and we're not sure about the time, there's some errors. So how far out is this calculation likely to be given that we have those errors? So we're going to use this formula here. Um, so we're going to have to differentiate. So uh, with respect to L, yeah. So this is basically the same formula. So you um, differentiate with respect to the variable times the error in that variable and just add them all together. So we're going to calculate. So let me write down the formula. I want to do 2L 
t to the minus 2. If you don't know that dividing by t twice is t to the minus 2, you'll have to go through the quotient rule. So, error in calculation of g is dg max. Now, this time we will need the uh, derivatives at some stage. So, the first one is absolute value, differentiate g with respect to l. So, with respect to l, t is a constant, so fix the constant 2t to the minus 2. And then what you have is the derivative of l respect to l is 1 times the error in l. Okay. Plus, now this is where the absolute value comes in because the derivative of t to the minus 2 is negative. So, differentiating now with respect to t, fix the constant 2l, and the derivative of t to the minus 2 is minus, so multiply by the power, reduce the power by 1 times the error in t. Okay, so uh, now we evaluate these at the measurements. So now the first thing, that the t to the minus 2 is actually 1 over t squared, which is positive. That's no problem. So I can forget about the bars there. So that's 2, 1.43 to the power of minus 2 times 1 doesn't do anything. And the error in the length was 0 0.1 plus. Now this next thing, the 2L is positive. The 2 is positive. t to the minus 3 is positive. But that negative is negative. So what I'm going to use on this thing now, you want to be careful, right? It's not actually true. That's not, a, it's not as simple as that because it's not that it makes minus signs disappear. It's it changes the sign of negative things. Um, now you might say, what? Well, look, what's the absolute value of minus minus two? It's not minus two. It's the absolute value of two, which is equal to two, which is equal to um, minus minus two. So you have to be careful. It's not just getting rid of a negative, uh, a negative sign. It's a negative number. So actually, what we're going to do here is we're going to evaluate this number, and we, we in other words, we won't be too smart. So let's evaluate that number there. Um, uh, let's see, two times ten times minus 2 times 1.43 to the power of minus 3. And the error in the time, I think, was 0 0.01. Yeah. Okay, so we're getting here. Um, now, Oh, uh, I'm going to write the same thing again here. So 2 by 1.4. I'm just being really, really careful with the absolute value sign here. It's too careful, really. So I'm going to calculate the thing inside the absolute value there. So it's 2 by 10 by minus 2 by 1.43 to the power of minus 3. And this thing is minus 13.679. Uh, right? By 0 0.01 and that the absolute value of that minus 13.679 is plus 13.679 so now let's evaluate it all so I have 2 by 1.4 so I was probably being too careful there but no harm by 0 0.1 plus 13.679 times 0 0.01 and it comes out with 0 0.23 Four, six. But we said we round this to one significant figure, 0 0.2. Okay, and now we can say, so that means we should go back. Because the error is to one significant figure, one decimal place. Sorry, not one, yeah. Now it is one significant figure, but really we're interested in the decimal places, one decimal place. So we should go back and round this to one decimal place, 9.8. So we're going to have g our calculation i don't know why i left so much space here is 9.8 plus or minus 0 0.2 meters per second squared